Hi there, I'm Danny, spiritualtherapist.com, and today I'm very excited to bring you one of the legends of WWE. And without any waiting or teasing, I'd love to introduce you to my friend, Victoria from WWE. Oh, Victoria, hi, thank welcome. you so much. Thank you for having me. We've been postponing this for so freaking long, and finally, you know, Think, you know, the darn COVID, you know, it's okay. That at least we got time now to have our show. Yes. You know what I mean? So it was yes. a blessing and a curse, but yeah. But um, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so and, um, much. Unfortunately, and you can call me Lisa. Lisa's, you know, Victoria and Tara was my stage name. I know, yeah, I, was so. bring, I was gonna bring that up. Um, and you said the C word, which is so dull, uh, but we're trying to keep that word out of our mouths. Um, yes, yeah, yes. Very you know, dumb. you know, in, in, in your part of town, like where you grew up, that C word is just thrown around so much. When I first heard it going, you know, overseas, I was like, oh, that's such a bad word. The C word there, you know, here, there, yeah. it's just every other sentence, you know, I guess yeah. it's like our F word. It's our like our F word, I guess, oh, cool. you know? Yeah. For fuck's sake. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let's just start. Let's, you know what? We're just starting this heavy oh wheel, you guys. I told, I told Danny, oh um, she goes, you know, is there anything that you cannot talk about? And I go, I'm an open book. I don't have oh anything. Oh my God, hide. Lisa, Lisa, you make me die. Okay. Do you know what I, I, I was about to say? Let's just start recording again, but no, no, let's just keep going. Lisa, you, you know, <laughs> Okay, everybody, this is Lisa Marie Varen. That's her real name. Her wrestling names are Victoria for WWE and or Tara for TNA, which is now called Impact Wrestling. Exactly. And I think they changed the TNA because it's, I think people, so I, I was always scared to people tell people I'm with TNA because they tits and ass. So I think it was not like a really... I, I didn't like the title. I'll be honest with you. And that's when they switched to impact wrestling. Yeah. So yeah, but I still say TNA just because that's when I started and it was the company back then. And right. I always have to correct myself impact wrestling, impact wrestling. But, yeah. yeah. It's a lot yeah. more elegant. It just feels like it's got more of a higher pedigree. Yes. TNA, and when I would tell people this, special. they would thought I was a, a mud wrestler. They would think, oh. oh, do you do mud wrestling? Or are you the girl that holds the card around the, the ring for the, for boxing ring? I go, no, I'm actually... Ooh. A wrestler. I go, I participate in the action. Yeah. Oh so God. yeah, I'm glad they changed it. I'll be honest with Definitely. you. Definitely. No, you'd be like, I'm actually an athlete, a long-term athlete that's taken years out of her life to educate her body in terms of, you know, being fit and strong and healthy and being able to pick those bitches up and throw them across the ring, Lisa. <laughs> it is a tough business. And I, um, every time I do a guest appearance or a signing, um, the parents would go, oh, my daughter wants to be a wrestler. And I'm like, pro golf in college, get a scholarship for golf. They're handing it like candy. And um, it, it's just, you know, it's a man's world that I work in. And, you know, of course, I wouldn't take it back for the world. But me being, you know, I was an athlete growing up. I describe what we did as being bad actors that do our own stunts. That's how I describe it. Um, because we're not Shakespeareans, but um, we do take a beating on our body and, you know, there's no off season. We are four days a week. Um, you don't ask for your anniversary off. You don't ask for a, a birthday off. You don't ask for anything, you know, so you miss a lot of parts in your life um, sacrificing for this business. But unfortunately, like the people that are in the business have a lot of passion for it. So I wouldn't take it back for the world, but if I had a kid, a girl, it would be a double standard. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I want you to be home because you're, you're, when you want to toss your kid in the, in the, on the road, you don't get to see them very often at all. You know, you're on the road. You don't ask for a day off. The show must go on, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I love what I did. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And you're still at it. I mean, you travel so much all year round. You're always gone Comic-Con or WrestleCon or let's talk a bit about that. What is the actual impact on your life, your private life with your boyfriend, partner, David? Like how does he manage his girl being away so much? He wasn't used to it, Danny. Um, you know, um, David, that's how we were introduced. And um, I don't think he was used to being a, um, with a, a girl that is such an independent woman and travels and is away from home so much because I still do travel. I go to Liverpool ne next week. 
um, for a signing and it's called for the love of wrestling. It's a signing out there. And, uh, at the beginning, he was not used to it. I think he saw pictures of me taking like pictures with muscular men. And I'm like, I'm not attracted to that. I don't find that attractive. I'm attracted to you. You have nothing to worry about. If I don't text you back is because I have a rule when I'm at signings or fan interaction, I think it's super rude to be on your phone. Yeah. While yeah. someone paid hard, their hard earned money to come and meet you and have a chit chat with you. Yeah. I think it's so rude. And it, um, our, in our house, the phone goes off after 5 PM yeah. and the weekends yeah. very minimal, unless I have to post something for business. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah just, this is, this is the devil. It's a curse. You know, it's a double-edged sword. You know, unfortunately, yeah. this is our business, this is our phone. Right. But, you know, he wasn't used to it. Um, he was just like, hey, are you ignoring my calls? And I'm like, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I, I'm working. Um, I'm, I'm in a different zone. And I finally got to bring him to LA Comic-Con. And he goes, oh my God, now I get why you don't talk for a few days when I come home, because you go on, you're on. This is not just a 10-minute match. You are um, on the floor, standing on your feet, talking to fans and you, you have to go into character when it's kids because they want to believe that character, you know, like Santa Claus is real. So you go in and out and you don't want anybody to have a bad experience. So you just go, for me, I go extra on extra, extra, extra. And I'm just, I have n my, I just have nothing left by the time I get home. Yeah. You know, yeah, so he yeah. was not used to that. He would always ask, are you mad at me? And I'm like, you just oh. experienced LA comic con. You see what I, what I, you know, what I go through. And he was like, you know, I get it now. He goes, but it's still, you know, you have to remind them like, you know, Hey, I love you. And I miss you that kind of stuff, but I'm busy. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, I would yeah. never date a wrestler or a data fan just because, you know, when I'm home, I don't talk about wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I'm home. I'm with my yeah. dogs, normal life, washing dishes, cleaning up my pee pee pads just um, <laughs> washing my laundry and just people don't think you have a normal life. They think you're gallivanting, going to five-star hotels, uh, you know, all these dinners that are, you know, seven course. You, uh, it's not like that. You know, it's just, we're all frugal and struggling from the pandemic and just trying to make a living. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting and wonderful that you're giving us such insight into the professional world of wrestling and how the thinking is and, you know, since I've known you and you've shared so many stories with me about like, it's tough, it's black and white, you're in one minute, you're out the next, they don't, they don't, there may be the odd, like great glamorous party or dinner here and there, but if the majority is you just boots on the ground, get your ass in the gym, you know, and, and take what happens. Now, I have to say, uh, some of your legendary videos of the matches that you've done are some of the most violent looking I've ever I seen. Know. Like you are such a fierce bitch. Like you come out snarling and you get in that ring. You smash tables over people. Please share that gentle side of yourself. You know, <laughs> it's so funny, Danny, that you mentioned that because it's a complete opposite of them, my personality. Because I'm like one of the people that always, they always say, the co my coworkers would say she's too nice for the business because I'm super sensitive. And um, I just became that bully in high school or junior high or elementary school that people were like afraid to pa pass by in the hallway. So I went to that character. You know, we've all had bullies, you know, growing up. Um, I, I grew up in California, which is just, a really it's it's don't get me wrong i love california but it's a tough place to live because everything is very superficial you know um for us women you can't age you can't get fat you can't get gray hair and you know if you're flat chested you know in high school they called me two by four i was so flat chested and it, it got in my head and i ended up getting breast implants and no big shocker there but you know growing up in such a environment that every it's looks and the blondes were the you know the good guys the dark hair is the villains and stuff like that you know I, I bleached my hair blonde with a whole bottle of sun in in high school because I want to be blonde all California and so you know if I can go back I would do stuff differently and be you know this is why I think you know when we, we do all these like you know the panels and stuff like that just having girls have the confidence and you know having you know mental awareness out there it's just um we're not perfect. We are human. We make mistakes and we all struggle day to day um, with bills, um, boyfriend problems, uh, you know, car issues. Just, it's just, it's, we are not different. We are the same as everybody else. You know what I mean? And I think people put us on a pedestal and I'm like, are you kidding me? My car's in the shop. And I'm like, 
please God, don't find anything wrong with it because you know, I'm, yeah. you know, I, I got bills to pay, Yeah, you know? So yeah. Yeah. yeah no, but, but those, yeah. But, but also that personality, um, I guess I was a bigger girl. I was considered a bigger girl in WWE and, and, and in TNA or impact wrestling. And so I was, um, I was the one that caught the little girls and let them do all their fancy stuff. And um, I, I didn't want to do those matches that the chair, throwing the chair on someone's head, going through the table. But, you know, in this business, you don't say no. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's like being an actor, like Tom, if they said Tom Cruise, hey, you die at the end of the movie. You think he comes back and goes, oh, I have a problem. I don't want to die because I'm Tom Cruise. Yeah. It's, it's a show. It's entertainment that we do our own stunts and it's a storyline. So it's not based on reality, you know? So I got that psycho image and very aggressive woman in the ring because of the way my style of working. Cause I trained in California, then I trained in Memphis and then I trained in Louisville, Kentucky. And their style was very exaggerated, very, uh, just very dramatic. And they're like, wow, you're very intense when you wrestle. And I go, that's how I was taught. And so they said, oh, you're a good psycho character. That's how I got my psycho character, which yes. I would, I would love, I loved. I absolutely loved, you yeah. know, cause it's easy to be a bad guy because in this business to get someone to love you as a female is super hard to get someone to hate you very easy, you know, um, because you're wearing skimpy outfits and, you know, showing cleavage. And, you know, of course I was always uncomfortable wearing my outfits and stuff. It just wasn't my personality. I'm very much of a tomboy turtlenecks uh, joggers and baseball cap. And then to have a drop, to have to dress sexy. It's, it's, it's a world that I'm not used to. And I was never comfortable, but, um, as soon as I went the, to the curtain, I am not Lisa. I become my character. Mm -hmm. As soon as my music hits, I just go, okay, I'm going to kill you. You know what I mean? I'm going to, I'm going to rip your head off. This is a challenge. This is a competition, you know? And I grew up with three brothers. So there you have it. Tomboy. It's amazing. You know, one of the things I've always loved about you is that you're one of the most honest people I know. You never hold back. You just spill, 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 girl. And it's just a beautiful quality um, that you have. Um, we're going to go back to the beginning in a few minutes so we can help people understand the, the mental mind of an athlete, of a wrestling long-term athlete. Um, but I also wanted to, um, to ask you, what in the, I mean, when you come out on stage at WWE, there are millions watching it on television and there are hundreds of thousands of people in the audience. It is one of the most viewed um, events on the planet, you know, <laughs> especially America, everything's so much bigger there. How does it feel when you come out at an event that big and what was the greatest storyline character that you've had to date? You know, um, I've had several storylines, but, um, and of course, you know, some of them I wasn't so happy about, but um, my psycho character, when I, I, when they gave me my psycho character, I embraced it because there was nothing I could do wrong. I can go over the top. And I had a, a, a male sidekick, um, Stevie Richards, and he was amazing. And he was, a, it's not normal to have the guy as a sidekick and the girl is the focus of the wrestler. And so, um, but he would always come backstage and I was always nervous. I would throw up before matches because I was so nervous and people are like, I was very insecure, very insecure. Um, am I good enough to be here? Am I, uh, are they happy with my work? And it, it was just so much pressure. It was easy, go figure, easier to perform in front of a hundred thousand people opposed to a, a small armory that has 30 people because you can hear exactly what those 30 people say. So you can pick up on what people are talking. A big crowd, it's kind of a blur. And so you're kind of focused on promote, um, performing in front of the whole, whole area instead of like a 30 room person. Like you're just like going, you're looking at someone and they're, oh no, they're not buying what I just did. I have to turn it up. You know what I mean? So it's it's an art, our, 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 our business is, it, it's, it's a hard business to learn like psychology. And it's not just about moves. You have to tell a story within moves. And, but um, it was, I, what you saw out there coming out of the curtain was not me. Um, I would throw up. I had nervous belly. I had to pee my pants. Um, and I would shake when I had the microphone to speak. I was more of an action girl. You could see my hands shake. So I loved my cycle character. When I went to impact wrestling, I was known as the black widow. So they were like, oh, you're the spider girl. So I went to impact wrestling. They gave me a tarantula and I go, what's this for? 
um, when you give the, your finisher, which was called the widow's peak, um, and uh, when you give the move and they're out, you put the spider on the girl's body or, you know, uh, and the girls were terrified. I was terrified too, the tarantula, but I was like, I talked a big game signing a new contract. I'm like, you know, you give me any match, I'm gonna do the best I can. You'll be happy with my performance because I give 110%. And I didn't say no to the spider. And but you can see like my first time I hold the spider, I'm like this. And I'm like, what's it doing? What's it doing? I had to Google about tarantulas and their body language. It was terrifying, but I did think I felt very cool because there was a guy back in the day, Jake the snake, and he used to bring a snake out. And I was like, I was a chick bringing out a spider, trying to be, you know, the spider was named poison. It was supposed to be my, you know, my best friend and stuff like that. So I felt very cool. I had, I had male uh, storylines, so I felt very cool. But what you saw out there, I went into a mindset of a different person. I, I did a mind trick. I had to look at the curtain before, say a prayer that no one gets hurt. And all right. And I hear my music and my personality would change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, it's nuts. Yeah. It's a crazy yeah. business. It's incredible. 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 Goodness. Wow. Thanks so much. This is so fascinating. And I know people are going to be so excited to really get inside the mind of somebody like you, you know, an athletic legend um, in, a, in a, a world that, you know, so many people believe every move. Some people think it's just pure fantasy. It's a show. But really, it's a combination of both, if we're honest, because some of the moves, oh, my God, just watching your stuff of over the many, many, many years, the, the way you've got to land just right. I mean, how, what is the injury status oh, like? like in it, uh, I have a torn ACL. I broke my nose. I chipped my tooth and um, if there's a, you know, the show must go on, you know? Um, and also too, it doesn't just start like when the show starts at five o'clock PM or something like that. We get to the building 11 o'clock and you put this facade on like, Hey, what match do I have? All right, great. You don't have any personal problems at home because you don't want them to think I have problems am I going to be focused on this match? You just leave everything outside and uh, you're, you're ready to work. You're ready to work. And you just like, again, like I would say a prayer, please, God, no one gets seriously injured, you know, cause this is entertainment, but um, you know, be me. I was a cheerleader, um, which helped my performance, you know, being a ham and just, you know, school spirit and stuff like that. And gymnast, you know, gymnasts land on their feet to train me to land on my back and take a bump was very difficult. I, it was, my body was fighting to land perfectly and you have to tuck your neck in. And the chiropractor said, you're in your business. I like to compare it to a car crash. You guys have whiplash. You get whiplash every time you're getting hit by a 60 mile per hour car. So our, you know, my neck, my spine is, is curved the wrong way, but that's common in wrestling. Yeah. You know, but you know, we do sacrifice a lot, your body, mental status, your, relationships, you know, I'm divorced, you know, and it's, it's, you know, when you sign the dotted line and want to be a wrestler, it's not a nine to five job. It's a 24 seven job because, you know, you come home, you want to rest. Darn it. I got to go, you know, back in the day, there was tanning salons, but um, you know, I got to go tan. I got to go get my nails done. I have Botox. I got to color my hair. I have extensions. You know, it's like the beauty part too you know, and then get, getting ready to go back on the road, being home for two and a half to three days, get your whole focus. Like, okay, I got to pack for the next trip, you know, but it was exciting. I got to see the world. I got to see the world and just visit different cultures. And just, it was, it was, I enjoyed my career and I'm, I'm still very passionate about it. Just amazing. Amazing. Now talking to other cultures, you yourself are a beautiful mix of Puerto Rican on your dad's side and Japanese on your mother's side. Well, okay. My mom is actually Tatar and we have a lot of Turkish relatives and my dad is Puerto Rican. And um, my mom was born in Seoul, Korea. And then the war happened. And so they had to evacuate. Um, there's, a, there's a show that I highly recommend to you guys. It's called Pachinko. It's on Apple TV. And it's how Koreans were forced to go move to Japan And my mom was four years old and they left with their bags on their back and went to Japan to start a new life. Mm. And so my mom's raising is Korean and Japanese. So my mom had blonde hair. She dyed it, of course, it was California. And she had a Japanese accent and she also spoke Arabic and, you know, Tatar, and she spoke many languages, but I grew up with a lot of cultures 
and also being Puerto Rican. So uh, I didn't grow up with the twinkle, twinkle little star. I didn't grow up with like, you know, jingle bells. I grew up with Japanese songs that my mom sang to me as a kid, you know? So it was, you know, when I went back to Japan, this was a really, I, I started crying when I got off the plane, they started singing a song my mom sang to me as a kid. And I went, oh my God. And I was like, is that for me? Is that for me? Oh, I thought there was a rock star band coming off the plane oh, and it was like oh. us wrestlers. And I'm like, it was so beautiful. And I got to send my mom back. I used all my miles on American airlines, sent my mom out two weeks before to go visit family. Cause we still have family there. And she was my translator um, on my interviews. Oh, How beautiful is that? That is amazing. Forever, so that was my gift free. back to give my mom, you know? Oh, yeah. Lisa. So I lovely. know. Lovely. Would you please share with us a song that your mama taught you in Japanese? Okay. Yes. Um, I don't have a very great singing voice, but this is um, one that, um, okay, can you hear it? Let's see. Oh, I got to skip the ad. No problem. Take your time. Let's see. Um, can you hear? Yeah. Can you hear it? Just about. Better? No. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lullaby. That's so lovely. And I listen and my poor boyfriend comes home. Okay, I listen, I, le I listen to a lot of Hebrew because I'm also Jewish. And so I listen to how, a lot, like when you feel here from the down, you know how our apartments are in yeah. San Diego. When yeah. you live in an old building, you can hear down the hall coming right. off the elevator and he'll, he'll know my mood by what song I'm listening to. So if I'm sad, I'll listen to my Japanese. And then when I'm kind of mushy, I listen to my Hebrew music and, um, you know, from, you know, for Sabbath and stuff like that. And he was like, oh no, what am I walking into? Is she sad <laughs> or is she happy? Yeah, so, and I listened to a lot of Disney tunes. He goes, when I know you're listening to um, Moana or Frozen, I know I'm coming home to a happy girl. The oh, other ones, no. yeah, but no, you know, so I grew up like my mom, very, like, I only know bad language in Japanese, <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, you always learn that, but um, the Japanese culture and Korean culture I have two friends, Lena Yada and Gail Kim, that they say that I'm more Asian than they are because uh, I grew up with that background and um, I love the culture. But Pachinko, watch Pachinko on Apple um, TV, tells you the story about the Koreans having to evacuate to, um, and of course I cry, epi, epi, it's a chair jerker, Danny. It's, it's, yeah. it's because it reminds me of my mom, like my mom had to go, you know, they had to leave with the bags yeah. on their back and, you know, yeah. to move to Tokyo. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And these are the amazing, kinds. right? It's so amazing. And for so many reasons, there's so much of the history of Earth, the real history and cultural history of Earth that gets forgotten or gets changed over time, or Wicca Frigginpedia changes it. Or but but it's just so lovely for you to bring some of that in through the story of you, Lisa. Or Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so Lisa wonderful. to you, Daddy. It's Lisa I know, to you. Darling, yeah, I yeah. Know. It it, I it is. I'm I'm very blessed to have culture and when I, when I, you know, go out, you know, I'm, I'm introducing a lot of foods to Dan, to David. I was going to say Danny to mm. David and he's not used to eating. You know, I'm very adventurous. I'm like, Oh, I want to have something from their culture. And he's just not adventurous as, a, enough, you know, for me, but it, it made me appreciate, you know, I, I do send like links to my brothers. Do you remember when mom used to sing this on the piano? My mom played the piano mm. and they're like, no, you know, keep in mind, you're much younger than us. And she sang more with you than us. And I'm like, how could you forget the song? And I'm like, you know, they're like, God, they're impressed. So whenever we go to a Japanese restaurant, I always say, do you have Japanese music? Could you play this? And we'll all sing. Uh, ah, yeah. see, that is very special. And that you remembered as a younger child, your mother's songs and could remind your brothers or keep that memory of your mother. who's. who's and I can't remember last weekend. I can remember like a long time ago, like I'm like childhood memories, but like last week and I'm like, Hey, where did you, where did you go last weekend for your parents? I go, Oh, was it Baton Rouge or did I go to Memphis? You know, I, I yeah. Isn't that funny? 
Yeah. Yeah. Special yeah. memories. It goes in your heart. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Most definitely. Um, so let's take you from um, a little girl growing up. Um, okay. What were your influences? When Do you remember the first time you ever saw a wrestling match on television? On television, I didn't start watching as until I was an adult, but my three older brothers, um, my oldest brother was in the Pan American Games um, Olympic athlete for uh, wrestling. So they were all real wrestling in, you know, in high school and college, you know, not the, the showmanship that I did. And so my oldest brother was like a straight A student, Bob, Bobby, Mike, Bobby, Mike, and Mark are my brothers. And they were a huge influence on me. My oldest brother, straight A student, he's a go-getter. He's a very successful businessman here in San Diego, you know, express blinds. He does window coverings. Mike was um, lived, worked in the Japanese culture, trading and exporting and stuff like that. And he bought me my first motorcycle when I was a little kid. Yeah, a dirt bike. And my other brother, Mark, was closer in my age. So I was very bonded, very close to him where I got I got attached to all their girlfriends and when they would break up with them, I would be the one feeling I got, like I got broken up, um, but <laughs> I didn't start, but yeah, you know, I was like, how do you leave her? She was so nice. She was nice. She was so nice. Yeah. You know, they were players and this is why I didn't date till I was much older because I was scared of boys because my brothers were, you know, not exactly great. Uh, you know, uh, well, they were a good lesson, a good lesson. Yes. For you, that's right? why I was so, I was single for so long. Um, because I was, if I would have crushes when they liked me back, I was like, oh, they only want one thing. They only want one thing. You know what I mean? So I didn't date till I was much older, but you know, my dad was in the military, um, very, the, the breadwinner, um, you know, uh, just, you know, a hardworking man and just family was first and everything like that. So I had a real strong male presence in my, my life. You know, my, my mom was more my culture, my, my childhood, we would play the piano and sing and watch old movies, watch golden girls. And, um, I, I was, she was my best friend and, uh, it's, it's having a male dominant family. I got into fitness competitions because cheerleading and gymnastics, um, which was bodybuilding incorporating like a gymnastics routine. And so I, I did that. And that was my intro to wrestling. I met two girls, um, China and Tori Wilson. And I told China, I go, I have a, a couple friends that are involved in wrestling. And I go, it's so amazing to watch because I started watching when my friends got into it. And so I wasn't really like a childhood. I knew Hulk Hogan and, you know, big names like that and Jake, the snake, but, uh, I started watching it as, and as an adult. And I, I asked China, I said, Hey, I, she goes, are you a wrestler? You have a really good look for it. And I was like, you know, I think I can do what the guys do. Cause I'm a gymnast gymnast. I'm a tomboy you know, and I could think, I think I'm the more th athletic side than just being the sidekick girl, but you know, the hot chick that walks in, I'm not that kind of girl. And she's, I sent my stuff in, did um, a VHS back then, $600 for me to get this tape put together of wow. all my fitness routines, um, news. I used to demonstrate exercises. So I had it compiled into a videotape, sent it. And my ex-husband helped me put this package together. And I got a call back in a month. We would like to meet you when we're in LA. Mm. And um, we've never seen a tryout video or a package so professionally done. And meanwhile, you know, we're in LA, you know, or, you know, California, you're an acting world. So you're not going to present yourself with your phone, iPhone uh, recording, you know, right. it's professional, you know? Yeah. So until I got to the business where people were sending in words like backyard wrestling, um, things in their backyard, that kind of stuff. And it was, uh, that was my foot in the door. Mm. The rest is history. I told my mom and dad, I was, I was wanting to go to med school and told me, they were like, what about med school? And I like, you know, I'm going to get bored of this. You know, me ADHD, I get bored with things. I got to switch it up. And, um, it ended up biting me in the butt and I got addicted to it. And so was in the business for 21 years, you know, so crazy. But prior to that, how I got addicted to working out, Danny, mm -hmm. I used to work at the eye and tissue bank and it was, I procured, which I removed corneas, uh, eyes, saphenous vein, heart, bone, and middle ear for transplantation. And so when I was let's, working on the body, yeah, let's just go back. I was a, a biology major. Yeah. You said it so quickly. 
about the tissue removal expert. Can you just yeah. explain that part again? Because it sounds really crazy that you remove people's eyes and ears. Because you I know, I know. Muscle. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. People are like, because you know what? I think we get the, the whole stereotype. She's a muscle head dingbat um, because of what we do for a living. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us have education. So I was at, I went to UCLA and um, Loma Linda University and Riverside Community College. And I want, I was a biology major and um, going to Loma Linda University in California, we were like second quarter of biology. We were working on bodies already. Um, it was a private college. They were vegetarian, no shorts, um, it, no makeup, like no jewelry. It was very strict school, but the education was freaking amazing. And I wanted to go to med school, met my ex-husband, his friend, work at the eye and tissue bank in, um, in Redlands, California. And he was removing corneas, eyes, saphenous vein, bone, heart for the valves um, and middle ear. And occasionally when we get like a skin graft or something like that, but uh, I said, oh, you think I can get a job there? And I went to go do my, my interview and they're like, oh, you went to Loma Linda University. So they knew the education was so great. I'm not, I'm not crapping on UCLA. It was great no, education. No, yeah. But when you go to a private college, you are paying for the upscale yeah, yeah. education. And yeah. Thank goodness I don't have a kid because I'd be forcing private school yeah, to death, yeah. you know, but I started the day I went for my interview. So I was removing corneas, heart, saphenous vein, middle ear, bone. Um, I, I know I'm missing something else, but um, for transplantation and working on cadavers uh, and going over medical history charts, talking to the family and asking about donation was the hardest part, you know, because you call, you are calling right after the demise. And that was the hardest part, but you have to go in a room. It's all white walls and it's small like this. So you're just focused on talking to the family. You know, I'm so sorry. This is, I'm so sorry for your loss, but I just want to keep, you know, throw this at you. I don't need an answer now. I'll call you in a couple hours just because we can, we do have a time limit to retrieve the tissue that it's, going to be used for transplantation mm -hmm. and um, cutting through the tissue. I got addicted to working out because I was like, Oh, my family doesn't have a really good health background. You know, we're, we don't really diet, you know, we, we, we like our fatty foods and stuff like that. And I was, and I got addicted because I'm like, Oh my gosh, is this my future is passing away at 38 or, you know what I mean? You get fear, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that's when I started getting addicted to working out, mm -hmm. but um, it was, incredible i bet you Am amazon just knocked on my door uh, but um yeah. well, we can we, Moana, we can put Moana. this on moana we can put this uh just on hold for a minute if you need to run to the okay phone door. let me go let me go see if someone's yeah, at my door this is real life Angel no figure Kate. i never get during interviews i never get interruption like this oh no problem all right let's go and yes. she's back i'm back i'm sorry i got an amazon package delivered they never knock on the door. I'm in a high, I mean, I'm in a big building, but I, I just, I, I think I got into wrestling. Just like the gist of it was from being a biomedical student um, and being so like health conscious and going, oh my gosh, my future is, you know, I eat McDonald's almost every day, that kind of stuff. And um, I got addicted to it and started competing in bodybuilding. Um, just, I just did one show in bodybuilding. And then I saw fitness on TV. That's when the dance routine gymnastics routine and then the physique you know it was like a pageant with muscles and a dance routine um mm -hmm. not nasty it was you know it was showing like certain moves were required and um yeah that it was when when little girls or little guys uh, you know i want to get in the wrestling business and but they're not old enough to go into the wrestling school because you have to be a certain age um i always uh do wrestling for in, in school and gymnastics yeah. Gymnastics helped me a lot, a lot mm -hmm. and cheerleading, you know? So yeah. yeah. Crazy, yeah. huh? It's just so See? incredible. It's incredible. You know, the whole lifestyle, the whole kind of where your life it, takes it, you, like you, yeah. you, you plan on doing this and you just take a huge turn yeah. the other way, yeah. you know? And it's quite, it's an extraordinary lifetime and lifestyle being a, an athlete, being a, a wrestler. When I was growing up in the seventies, our two biggest influences were giant haystack and big daddy <laughs> did you ever hear of those two <laughs> i yes i have and i go that that's so obscure out of everybody that, that you mentioned those names that's so funny 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you did watch, did you watch wrestling as a kid, Danny? Yeah, it was like Saturday. You did? Yeah, it was on television on Saturdays. It was Saturdays. a thing, like it was a thing to do, you know? It yeah. really was. And, and uh, you know, the, the American influences were definitely um, Hulk Hogan. Um, yes. He was definitely right, right there. And uh, I mean, you know, he, uh, he had a reality show on in, when I lived in America, um, yeah, yeah. With Brooke Hogan with his family. Yes. Yeah. He I'm, was, really, uh, I'm really good friends with his daughter. I'm good for the oh, friends with are? his daughter. Yes. Yes. She's shouldn't... very super sweet. Super uh, sweet. Because um, yeah. they were so raw and they seemed so in love, him and his wife, for so long. And then they broke up on on television. Like I was dead. I stopped watching it. I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah, watch it's devastating, like, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like us wrestlers don't really have a really good um, track record of because, you know, again, you're on the road four days a week. The person you get, like when I come home after a show, like travel, there's no off season. So you're on the road constantly. Yeah. The person you go home to, they don't get the glamorous girl with the fake eyelashes, dressed sexy in lingerie and doing photo shoots all the time. You come home. I put my mumu on. I put my pimple <laughs> cream on and I am not that sexy diva that people see. And I don't want to talk. I just, you shut down. So the poor person at home gets the bad part of what they see on television, you know, because you're on, 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 on so much and you need to turn off and you want to come home and go, I just need to, I just need to turn my brain off. I just, yeah, you know, I just, I just, yeah. And it's, it's really sad. And when you hear people getting divorced, you're just like, oh no, no, come on. You always say a prayer. Like, I hope this works out, you know, because yeah. come on, you know, yeah. try. Yeah. That's why I think therapy is a number one. Like, I think people should get therapy. Ooh. Nothing wrong with therapy. Not at all. Not at all. Oh, oh my God. I've gone through so many, as a therapist, so many counselings, um, you know, through my lifetime. I mean, with, with people that have come to me for, you know, and then just saying one or two different things that's made them stop and reset their mental, emotional state, then they've stayed together. You know, there's just so many ways to move through terrible, terrible Absolutely. times, terrible times. Yeah. And if people. you can't, and, it, and if you can't afford a therapist, there is online. So much. Um, so many Yeah. There's so, so much, much. Uh, like there's so much out there that you can get and people like, yeah. Oh, I can't afford a therapist. There are people that have a phone line and you can talk to that have been through it. Yeah. Definitely. You know, and there's oh, yeah. also priorities too. Like, you know, people like they get their coffee at Starbucks every day. They get their deliveries. They get this, they get that. Well, they should be investing in themselves. You know, maybe quit the shoes in the bag this month and maybe look at really your mental mind and nurturing and nourishing that, you know, especially everyone in that whole world is under so much pressure right now with all of the nonsense happening, right? Mental health is everything. And to that subject, can you speak a little bit about some of the, I don't know if decline is the right word. Can you help people understand some of the areas of mental health that can be affected in the met the uh, sports and wrestling world please uh yeah well for us um you know of course i said like the show must go on and you know you don't want anybody you know you have to have that tough exterior i'm in work mode i'm here to work i'm going to put a good show on and meanwhile i'm going through a divorce at home and of course of course I have my good buddies on the road in the locker room, you know, but there's a time and place for that. You don't talk about that at work. And, um, which, you know, thank goodness for my, my coworkers I work with. I had, I had a lot of friends to talk to, but you know, you when you're, you know, you clock in, you're, you're there for business. You don't have to, you don't have time to deal with the mental illness or, uh, or, or what turmoil you're going through at home and going, Oh my gosh, I'm going through, I'm through going through divorce. Okay. But this is not the time and place I think about it. So you keep on putting that in the back burner, you know, and which is wrong. And now there's like, you know, certain organization, we just did a charity for um, our God TV show. It's on YouTube. And um, we did it. All these girls donated dresses. Some of the guy wrestlers donated their suits and it went to NAMI tag me in united for mental awareness so Uh it's not a bad word to get therapy or reach out for help now it's okay and imagine the guys having to have such a tough exterior you know us girls are supposed to be emotional sensitive and stuff like that but the guys have to have that facade at their heart as rock but you know and also you know having to be that perfect body is a lot of pressure 
And, you know, we gain weight, we, we fluctuate, um, we, we age, we get gray hair, we get wrinkles, you know, like someone made a comment on my, my Facebook, like I, I wear glasses. They're like, oh, you look better without glasses. I go, it's not a fashion statement. <laughs> I, I cannot see the button. When I do like <laughs> selfies, I can't even see the take picture button. And I'm oh, like, my God. God, God forbid my eyes go bad. Um, they will not let you down. I mean, you know, they're going to let, they're very, it's safety with the, behind the computer screen yeah. to type something yeah. face to face. Maybe people are a little nicer, but you know, I think people need to realize we are human too. Yeah. We're not the super, super human or Superman, superwoman right. that you see on television. Right. Yeah. We are just like you, just exactly. like you, um, <laughs> you know, struggling day to day to make everybody happy. And the thing is like, you know, in our business, I feel, I don't know about everybody, but for me, I, I'm a very giving person mm -hmm. um, where I give too much and, and I do neglect myself mm -hmm. where I have, you know, the energy is taken from me. And um, I have a couple of friends that were like, you know, you give a lot of energy. That's why you're so tired all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said, well, I, I might, I'm going through menopause too. I go, maybe that's what it is. She goes, but no, you give so much to people. You want people to be so happy. You don't have anything left. You're I'm, I'm on E when I get home, you know, I'm happy. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I just have no yeah. energy, you know, yeah. for myself. I know. You know, and you are so sweet and you're so generous. And you know, I remember when we were uh, making a, a, a movie documentary um, that you were part of and um, with little Mackenzie, we were going to go from the, your medical background to your medical extractions on cadavers, which for those that don't know, a cadaver is a dead or a deceased body um, in the hospital morgue. So then um, Laura, and then Lisa was um, removing parts for transplantations to help, you know, enable and, and um, you know, elongate. That's not even the right word, but um, extend uh, hu living humans' lives. And um, yes. part of this movie documentary that we were doing, one of the reasons why Lisa was part of it was she was really amazing. And she's going to go into more depth on explaining why sports is so good for girls and her own influence and her message uh, to the girls in our world. And during the time of making this documentary with other um, legends, we also had Brandon League. Um, and I think him and his family are visiting Costa Rica soon. I'm hoping to catch up with them. Such a beautiful family. Brandon League is a former um, LA Dodgers, uh, LA Blue Jays. Dodgers. Him was a big, bloody, massive deal in the world. Yeah. Like baseball. I never watched baseball. But, he oh did that. You used to swing that wooden thing. Yeah, yeah. the bat <laughs> thing. Yeah. But he's a, another like you, athletic genius. He was also... Um, he was also in it and it's on the it's on the uh, on the back burner store because one of their children it was called it was the kids soul speak documentary one of the children little girl Mackenzie Williams um, uh, had no kidneys and uh, we did a, a program where we actually ended up with three kidney donors for her um, unfortunately um, she died um, and uh, it kind of messed my head up talking about mental health I was so devastated that she died and, and my thing was Here's Mackenzie saying she's got no kidneys. Here's Mackenzie's donor coming forward to say, hey, everybody has two kidneys. We don't need both of them to have a long, healthy, happy life. You can donate a kidney while you're alive, leave a living legacy in a child or an adult, and you know, feel good about yourself for the rest of your life and save one. Um, and, then it, and then the third part would have been her after the transplant. But as you said, life takes a corner, we never know. But I did actually do on my channel, Danny, D-A-N-I, spiritual therapist. I did interview her mother, Ronna, who's a really good friend of mine. And we, oh. yeah, we interviewed, because so many people facing grief in the world, the last yes. years especially. And so people have lost their children, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Ronna Williams, and Ronna adopted Mackenzie. She found her in a group home, which are these homes where there are a lot of throwaway children. The parents can't deal. The kids got some kind of disability and by, And she not only adopted Mackenzie, she adopted two other children also from a group home where kids were just yeah. thrown away. So anyway, back to, um, you know, the living legacies, the, um, the things that we do. And I have completely forgotten where we were going other than talking. Well, yeah, this is what you're, you're getting to because your documentary was like having like like encouraging women to be like a little bit more stronger and independent, you know, because it is a man's world. It has changed dramatically, just drastically. It's just hasn't changed enough. I mean, there's still little, you know, you're, you're a woman in the business. Um, like 
part of my speech when I did when I went to your your panel um, was talking about you know being a strong woman in a man's world and getting into sports and you know that that charity also too was um, having schools you know Stedman Oprah's husband was part of it too you yourself and myself and uh, having programs after school or in in schools like say there's not a class to say I want to be anime I want to be I want to just I want to do a comic book there's not a class for that. So there's like after school programs and there's like a section where you can go, you know, to help someone educate and prepare more for the future. And so, you know, you know, I, I'm always, you know, my gosh, I am, I'm in a man's world. I am in a man's world. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, don't let anybody put you down. You can do it. If you believe in yourself, you can do it and surround yourself out with the negative people in with the positive. That's what I'm, I'm I learned way late in my life. No more negativity for me. I only encourage in, like positive energy that people are have something nice to say, not someone that's like, oh, woe is me. And you're not doing anything about it, you know? So, you know, uh, yeah, that, that was, in, and having Mackenzie, um, that's really, yeah, very, very sad. And I, wanna, I don't want to get emotional, but um, yeah. And when you told me about the kidneys, my boyfriend, David, works at Sharp Medical in the kidney, post kidney and pancreas transplantation department. And so, yeah, and he got to go watch his surgery. And I was like, can you bring, am I allowed to go and watch? And he goes, no, I'm new. And I'm like, well, can you tell him what I did for a living? I go, I'm so fascinated by that. And so, you know, if you guys want to be a donor, um, like, you know, you don't just sign that thing on your driver's license. You have to let your next of kin know that I want to be a donor. Let them know your wishes because even though I would make the call, they check mark donor and the family said, no, I can't, I can't retrieve any tissue for transportation and you're going to save someone's life and let your next of kin know. And just, you know, we're here to help. Like, you know, after life, we're, you still can help people, yeah. you know, and you know, it's a beautiful thing off. It's awful that people have to suffer through this. But there's a positive message that like, to get off your butt and, and be involved in your community and believe, you know, promote what you believe in it. You know, like I'm, I'm big organ and tissue donor, yeah. you know, and mental awareness too. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And there's such that where we were at Danny was, that you know, it's we at? All, you know <laughs> we, we're trusting. We did decided we were just going to have a girlfriend chat, uh, you know, really highlight you and who you've been as a legend um, on television. I don't need highlighting. I really no. don't need highlighting. See, there I'm you here go. for you. I know. I, I'm here for you. I, if it's going to spread a positive a message, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm not here about, hey, follow me on this. I need more <laughs> like. I don't like that. So, yes. It's and funny. I'm a friend and I'll do anything for you, Danny. Oh, we just postponed this so long. I know, I know, I know that. I believe in timing of everything though as well, because there are other people. It's like, honestly, I say to people, when I look at the beautiful broadcasts on my channel, most of them are, pe are friends from before. <laughs> from before. Yes. And then you don't realize, I was talking to uh, this wonderful new friend. Her name is Janine Steffens, and she has a, a YouTube channel called Turn the Page. And she's the loveliest, most down to earth, like, cuddle your mum kind of woman and she gets the most extraordinary people on her channel but and we were on whatsapp video yesterday just hanging out and I said to her I was gonna you know be with you today she's like how do you know all these people I'm like I don't know I just feel like there's just been long all these soul agreements I've had to meet these beautiful bright lights and souls that people love and then to bring them together so we can learn more about them and that will then influence the people watching, you know, or feel better about themselves or, you know, however it lands, it's supposed to land. But so I, I, I agree. I think things happen for a reason and you meet mm -hmm. and cross paths with, with, with people for a good reason. There's always, yeah. I, I, I do believe that like our show too is mostly our friends on the show. And we have like gone outside the, the circle of wrestling. It's not just wrestling talk on our show. And uh, it's youtube.com slash God TV show. And it's us three girls. We're drinking wine, usually pajamas. And we have a guest and we just talk about funny road stories and, um, you know, highlight the guest, of course, but it's not just about wrestling. It's just us showing our bond because we spent more time with them than our families. And they want to see behind the scenes. Like, do you remember this story? Do you remember this road story? And it's more of a fun 
and it's almost like therapy. So we film once or twice a week and it's like therapy after um, we're done. I feel great. I'm like, okay, I don't need to make an appointment with my, ther- my therapist now. I already spoke about what I wanted to speak about, you know? Yeah. So it's not a, sh- it's a, not a shy place. It's a place where you're going to feel included. You know, so I think that's important. It so is. Now, if anybody watching this just wants to look above Lisa's head, to see the gold, all the words, G-A-W TV. Can you share what your TV show on YouTube is called, please? It is youtube.com slash God TV show. And God stands for grown ass women. Grown it's basically ass our, our logo women. Is women. Yes. And it's, um, <laughs> we, our logo was grown ass women talking nonsense. It was just an excuse. It started when the pandemics happened and it was, again, like a blessing and a curse. And we started the show because we're like, we got to do something. We're trapped in the house and we just had our hundredth hundredth episode. So we've been going strong for two years. I know we're not sick of each other yet. We're not sick of each other yet. Imagine three girls, one lives in England in Milton Keynes. One is in Nashville. I'm here in California. And so the time difference to do our show, you know, uh, Val is in Milton Keynes and she's eight hours ahead. So yeah. It's, it's, it's that, yeah. And three girls that ha- have strong personalities, but it's worked out wonders. It's, yeah. it, we're having so much fun, so well, much fun. I can't believe that's two years. I remember when you started that on Facebook, I'm like two years, that's crazy, crazy. Now the girls that you're with, cause there are obviously a lot of people that are, gonna, are fans of you. They're going to be oh, so yes. excited to watch you, Victoria. Um, also TNA's Tara. Um, but could you tell us about the girls on the show and other women that you've wrestled with around the world? Oh my goodness. Um, Nikki James, um, she is still active and she's um, over 40 and um, over 40, unfortunately is considered old in our business. And she is a mom. She's still active in wrestling. And she was the one with the bright idea with um, the show. And she reached out to SoCal Val who lives in um, England. And she used to be the um, inter- backstage interview, um, co- you know, commentary. And she would pre- be a presenter. She's She's brilliant, um, very witty, but Mickey is like still kicking ass. She's a country singer. She has two albums out and, uh, you know, still wrestling. So Cal Val and myself and another girl, Tracy Brooks, she's not on the show. We are doing hosting on pay-per-view on fight TV app, um, impact wrestling. So we're guest commentators, um, Tracy, so Cal Val myself, um, on fight TV because we're the original TNA, um, girls original. I, I, I don't feel like I'm the original, but we're guest commentating um, once a month yeah. to watch wrestling um, for three mm-hmm. hours. And that's on Fight TV app. And we're, we're having a blast. We're still involved in wrestling. You know, um, this is the thing with wrestling. It's one business you don't ever say retire from because it's always going to have you your foot caught in the sand going, okay, I need to retire. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, they, well, this just, this thing just came up. Let me just, let me do this. And then you're still constantly in the business. It, this is a business that bites you in the butt and you're never, you can never escape. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's uh, my friend says it perfectly hotel, California. You can check in, but you can't check out the song. Right. California. Hotel right. California. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. You know, one of the hottest guys myself that I've personally um, kind of, you know, just like had goggle eyes over um, or googly eyes um, was John Cena. Sorry, yeah. John loved yeah. legs and ass Cena. Yes, is he still around, bashing around? He, um, he's in the movies now. Um, yeah. I think he occasionally makes an appearance at the wrestling, but he became a superstar just like The Rock. He's doing big time movies. And um, we actually started wrestling school together in California. And then I moved... Yeah. And then Memphis. And then I went to Louisville and he was in Louisville when I got transferred there. Um, there's wrestling school, believe it or not. It's, you don't learn this in, I thought you can learn it in 30 days. You know, they were like, we want to meet you in 30 days. I thought it was like a gymnastics routine or a dance routine. I can memorize it. No, it's, there's an art to it. And, um, he's very successful, very proud. And, um, God, it's, you know, this business takes you on other adventures too, you know? So it's, you never retire. You know what I mean? It's, I think when you have that bug of um, being such a people person and just being on all the time, you, you, you're never going to be out, not the spotlight per se, but you're, you're always going to have something going on in your life, either yeah. charity work and being a speaker for that, which is great, you know? So yeah, yeah crazy. Yeah. 
Well, no, you're so active and you're always traveling. And again, you know, even though you're not in the ring as the highlighted, highlighted WWE champion fighter, although you did win the women's championship, do you have your belt next to you close by? I do. Or? You know what? Um, I don't have the original belt. Let me get this, Danny, though. I'm not, I'm two seconds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, they don't give you a belt when you leave. I didn't know you had to purchase one. So it gets passed on to the next winner. Hold on. Let me show you. Hold yeah. On. Perfect. Yeah. She's an amazing soul, so loving, so giving. So this is her 24 seven, you know, just her happy, bubbly, giving, smart, intelligent, educated, very grounded, very giving. She gives to her fans. She'll take as many pictures. She pulls the funniest faces I've ever seen. She's like, besides somebody, I'm just making fun of your faces. When you take pictures and you go, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give us some of that you know what? I, you know, I, I got to look mean, but um, okay. So we used to, I used to own restaurants with my ex-husband and it was, we had one that was wrestling theme and the guy goes, where's your belt? Why didn't your belt on, on the wall? And I go, well, they don't give us one. And they stopped making the belt that I won. And so the guy, it's a fan, his name's Mike, um, made me a belt, a custom belt. Yeah. How awesome. Like our fans are very loyal. That's the yes. thing. Like when they fall, they, they love you through thick and thin and stick up for you. So we made this custom belt. Yeah. And I take it to my appearances and take a picture with it. And everybody's like, can I hold it? And I go, it's not the original. And they're like, it's okay. You know, you know, they're all fascinated with it. So yeah, uh -huh. it was very kind and just amazing. Uh, I'm telling you, they're very, very loyal. These, the fans. Um, oh, I wish I had this picture. Um, a fan, I lost my dog um, this, this past year and it was so heartbreaking. His name is Sheldon yeah. and he drew an art, he drew a portrait of him. Oh, oh gosh, my place is a mess. Yeah. Oh, but it's he fun. drew like, it's, it's so nice though. So like it's, it's very, you know, yeah. the compliments you get from them, the little things they say makes a difference, Yeah. yeah. you know? You know, and then Lisa, also that's about you too. You know, you very much live your life honestly, truly, and out loud. So on Facebook, those of those that connect to you there, for example, you know, you're all you were always sharing like Lovey and Sheldon, and when you got them, and they were both rescues, right? And then you share yes, the past all about thing. yeah. I I'm all about rescues because um, when I don't get me wrong, I do like, you know, French bulldogs and all that kind of stuff, but I'm, I'm really big into the rescue because there's so many homeless animals. Like, mm. um, you know, humans could be nasty Ooh, dogs evil. and animals, unconditional love. You walk, yeah. you just, you walk in the house. They are just so happy to see you. And that that's what is <laughs> so funny. I can't wait to get home. Like David goes, Oh, the dogs miss you. And I go, Oh God, I miss you. I miss them too. And he goes, what about me? And I'm like, I know I miss you too, but the dogs are unconditional and they're very attached to me because I'm home all day, you know, filming and you know, he works all day and it comes home at night. And he goes, well, they don't do that to me. And I go, I'm home all day. Yeah. I'm, they're going to bond with me more so than, you know, but they're, I love, I love rescues. And when we got the second dog um, after Sheldon, because lovey, you know, is she, very playful dog. And I was like, we can't just have one dog. We need another dog. And he goes, we weren't going to go to the rescue that day. And he was like, oh my gosh, look at this dog. And I go, oh my gosh, she's cute. I go, what breed is it? He goes, Chihuahua blend. And I was like, oh, and I go, let's just go a couple of days. And he goes, her name is Moana. And I go, oh, let's go now. <laughs> I'm a di I'm, I like Disney like yeah. movies. And I was like, Moana, I sing that every day, you know? Uh, and I was like, oh, it was meant to be, we got her. So yeah, I was like, we didn't change her name. Uh, and I'm just all about, you know, giving, you know, homeless dogs, like there's so many homeless dogs out there, Yeah, you know, like breeders, like, come on, like there's so many yeah. running around, like just eating out of the garbage. It's, it breaks my heart. It's terrible. It's beyond. I, I know I have compassion. I love animals. Yeah. My favorite yeah. animals, elephants, just because of nurturing. I follow a lot of elephant Instagram. Danny, if you go to my Instagram and you, you punch in, in uh, elephants, you'll see all these elephant things I'm following. Um, they're, the mothers are so nurturing and just, they're all very protective and just very loyal animals that it just, I love that animal. That's my favorite animal. <laughs> mm, mm, that's so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful as you are, Lisa Marie Vail. You are beautiful. Also known as, oh, thank you, Victoria, legend in wrestling to this very day. 
Thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you for giving us such an important insight. And um, I would love to um, leave you with final words and also any you know, message in particular that you wanna give to parents as well as the girls in families who might want to get into this world of wrestling? Uh, you know, I would highly encourage um, watching Social Dilemma on Netflix. It's um, separating your kid from this in video games, um, getting them being more social. Um, I just noticed that a lot of young kids, you know what I mean, younger, young people, they don't have social skills anymore because they're so, they're so attached to this and get them, you know, get in, I think I'm talking to a friend of mine. I don't want to say her name, but she has to do play dates. And, um, she's like, I dropped off my kid um, at a play date and they just play video games all day. And I go, what, why don't, why doesn't the parents, like when you have a play date, Hey, we got this activity to do. Um, I sent her this rock there, There's this artist that paints on rocks. And I'm like, look how cool this is. Is it Easter egg? And like, how beautiful is this? You should do that with the kids. Like, I don't know, like, we didn't have to do play dates, you know, set up a schedule. I don't have kids, but getting more involved in your child's life and being a positive role model about that and asking them more. I'm like, what are you into? Get involved with your child, I think. And just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you don't belong in an industry and you need Got to have surround yourself by positive role models. Um, God, there's so much I need to tell people. Always believe in yourself. Um, you're always going to, don't get me wrong, you're going to second guess yourself all the time. I do it still to this day. I'm not perfect either, but you got to surround yourself with people that believe in you and you believe in yourself. Get, get away from negative people. It's, it's, it's contagious, but I don't know what else to say. Take care of yourself, your health. Um, let your next of kin know that um, to be a donor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's masses. It's masses. And uh, you know, your feminine influence, your positive, strong influence um, in and out of the uh, arena and rings um, in the wrestling world have definitely impacted hundreds of thousands of people. And I think it's wonderful that you're still honoring the characters and meeting people in person and giving them your time um, and encouraging And be them. humble. It's all about being humble yeah. too. You yeah. don't breathe, believe the hype. Hold on. I locked Moana on the other side. She's oh. <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, uh, you know, it's just, it's just um, being humble. Um, you know, I don't like, I don't like being someone that toots their horn, horn, horn too much, you know, being humble and realizing where you came from. And, you know, I'm uncomfortable with compliments. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not good at going. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, oh, stop, stop. I'm not used to this. You know what I mean? So you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, there's a lot of apps about aspirations too, like, um, uh, you know, positive quotes and stuff like that. I follow and like, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker. Um, well, I need no, work too, coming. you guys. I, I need work too. So, <laughs> well, we're always molding ourselves, aren't we? And just kind of growing every day, but especially now, especially now. Well, Lisa Marie Veron, Victoria in the wrestling world. Love you, girl. Thank you so much. I love for you. Being here. I love you. And thank you for having me on the show. And um, it was a blessing that we met. Definitely. Was, yeah, totally. You're yeah. my friend for life. And I love uh, you. And I'm proud of you. I'm uh, proud of you. Me too, you girl. Me I need to visit you. you. I need to visit yes, you. Definitely. Come be with me and the monkeys in the jungle. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I follow a lot of monkey Instagram too. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> oh my god i love you danny thank oh, you so much you, thank you darling thank you so much you're amazing Mwah. and to you guys out there watching i know that you're going to have the loveliest time learning more about your hero your heroine uh, victoria from wwe and also getting more insight into those that don't know her what a, what a beautiful soul she is and no matter what's happened in life uh, it didn't mold her to be an arsehole or somebody full of herself she's always kept her beautiful sweetness and humbleness and this is the kind of leader that we aspire to be on this planet, a humble leader, somebody who's been that to their hard knock school and come out the other side, just as beautiful and sweet and humble and loving. So to the audience out there that will watch this, thank you so much for sharing time with Lisa Marie Veron and I, and I send you my love and I'll see you soon. Thank you.